with sex offenders, what you'll get is, on the whole, they'll have no convictions. If they do, it tends to be for deception, but they won't. That's why these, these um, CRB checks are, are a nonsense when it comes to sex offenders. You know, they are, if you, you don't want a thief working for you, they're perfect. Or you don't want a doorman who's going to knock people's teeth out, they're fantastic. Sex offenders are obsolete, they ain't going to work. So what you can't do is try and outwit them. Right, and don't ever be a smart ass to people because if if I'm horrible to you, the, the last thing you're ever going to do is talk to me. So you split an interview into two halves. You have their half, then you have your half. Right, and a lot of coppers go in on the attack. You see it on the telly. I put it to you and all this, and it's a not, you can't do that. Right. So what I used to do was I I would um I, I'd say to my mate, you know, you just go along with me. So I'd make out I'd been drinking all night. Right, and I'd have. A folder. Now, what I would do, I'd know my case inside out. I'd know it so inside out, I could actually almost verbatimly read their statements without referring to it. So I knew everything in that file. So I'd take in a load of papers and I'd put them on the side and I'd say, so look, I always made out I was lay and everything else. And I'd say, like, and I'd say to my mate, I haven't read through this, you know. And I used to put a cup of coffee on the side and then drop it on the paperwork sometimes. God, look, it's, oh, I don't need it. Oh, I can't be bothered to read and you see them sitting there smugly looking. And, and and then you just engage in conversation. Now, no comments are a skill in their own right. And actually, no comments are the best tool you can ever have. Because you can, you can if you know how to interview properly, really, really tie someone up with a no comment. And I know it's going to be people watching this going, oh, sneaky sod. But it's, I was just about to say, sneaky bastard. Sneaky it? bastard. <laughs> it, it, look, it's a battle of wits. And mm -hmm. it is a battle of wits. You know, you win some, you lose some. Do you have so, a photographic memory, John? I, I'm pretty good. My memory's yeah. pretty good. If, if I know what I'm on about, it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Now, I interviewed um, Tracy Connor who's baby p's mother right and uh you know the baby p case the, no. the the little peter Connolly, the little boy that was um brutalized to death in in tottenham in london it made the papers his mum's just been released i think um anyway they they just brutalized this kid to death they, they just did all sorts to her and her, her partner um and, and and she was a nutcase, you know, uh, psychopath, really. But when you interview her, she was everything was. Um, uh, I'm I'm really good with my children. Uh, you know, I put them on the naughty step, and you go along with it. You say, well, that's good. That that shows that you're caring and you're doing it right. And what I'd done was I'd read the paediatric report, and the paediatric report was appalling, and and it was you know, it's evidently backed up and there was high impact trauma injuries that only a fist could have, you know, a, a facial bruising consistent with a blunt instrument hitting at four. So someone smashed a kid in the face, you know. And I said, look, you know, there's injuries. We're going to have to talk through these injuries. So I'd always draw a little picture and I'd draw a little picture of the boy and said, look, where this bruising on the face, how did he get that? And she went, well, she said, um, he... Um, he bruises easy. And I went, oh, okay, that would explain all the bruises. So go along with it. And she said, like, he was hit in the face by a toy. And I went, okay. And then well, they're giving you a gift now, a toy. It's a top. And she said, right, well, what toy is that then? Oh, it's like, um, she's actually set, drew a picture of, like, a knuckle duster. So, and what it was, it was actually a teething ring, right? So it was a teething ring. So it was a round little teething ring that it holds them by. So I got to, to describe it. And she said, it's really soft. And, and it's got the consistency of a wet sponge. And I went, okay. So she's now taking ownership of that, that her kid has been hit in the face with something with a consistency of wet sponge. So I said, well, well who hit him? Oh, another boy, her, his friend, who's also two years old or 18 months or whatever, and hit him really softly. And so what she's doing, she's taking ownership of the interview now. And she was saying that he hit him in the face like that. She's showing me. So I said, please show me, show me. So... When you interview, you only have to ask four questions. Tell me, explain, describe, show. That's all you need to ask. Open questions. Get as much info as you can out of them. And she's showing me and all this. I said, well, you know, my God, you said the kid bruises injury. You weren't lying, were you? She went, no, I'm not a liar. They're saying I'm a liar. And I went, oh, right. Now, what about this injury? And it went on like this. Every injury was ridiculously accounted for. And, you know, she's sitting there smug. So she I was said, sticking herself in every question. Of course, and giving her ownership of it. And saying, OK, you're not being sneaky. You know, well, you are, I suppose, but you're not lying. You're not tripping up. She's tripping herself up. And she's had her off. So I said, OK, now, before we go, you know, we've just got to go through what they've said. And then I turned and I just said, right, 
this injury in the face is conducive. This is a paediatrician with 20 years experience dealing with child abuse matters, blah, 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 blah. Read out all her credentials, you know, and then read, this is a high impact trauma with a blunt instrument to the face conducive with a fist traveling at speed, bang, bang, and then this, and then you said this, but hang on, boom, blah. Of course, she turned around, she just stood up and she just went for me, you know, in the interview. Wow. Fucking, you know, wow. spitting and all sorts. But, and then, and then what you say, well, that's a monster your your, your yeah. son sees. So pushing the buttons. Yeah, yeah, because, and this is what they do with grooming, you see. They, you know, they're all decent. And they're grooming, it's the same as people chatting a bird up. It's, you look nice. You and this is what they're doing. They're, they're being ingratiating and all that. Mm -hmm. But but their, their goal is to have sex with them or to mm -hmm. hurt them or whatever. Right, and then when they don't, that's when you see the demon. So what you've got to do is don't put yourself intellectually above and be a smug bastard. Uh -huh. I would never wear a suit. You know, suit again, it's official, it's horrible, it puts people ill at ease. Put them at ease. And again, give them a cup of tea, a cigarette and all that, you know. If they're, if they're a good person and they're not going to tell you anything, then they ain't going to tell you anything. You ain't going to get anything, you know. But you don't need to be a bastard to them. Um, but there are some people, you need to use uh -huh. every bit of intelligence you can. See them. for a paedophile, John, did you ever ask them the question, why do you do it? Yeah, yeah. And and I'd, I'd say to them straight away, do you have a sexual interest in children? I go, yeah. And and one guy said to me, he, he said something really odd. He said, I was in a house once. And he said, and uh, we, there's three of us, three men in the house, and we wanted a boy. He said, we wanted a boy. And he said, have you ever seen heroin addicts when they're clucking? He said, they're marching up and down, they can't settle, they're, you know. Well, yeah, of course, he said, paedophiles are the same. And he said, all of a sudden, the phone rang, and this guy on the other end said, I've got a boy, I've got a boy. He said, everyone was relaxing. I went, and I said, well, what is it then? What is it? He went, it makes you high. It makes you high. We enjoy it, and it makes us high. You know, and, and that's it. And it's, but, you know, you, you look at the destruction it causes, and, and, you know, and again, they're very clever. They will turn everything around, so they'll put themselves as a victim. They'll use all these different traits, or they'll they'll vein illness and uh, and start crying, and they'll be saying, "I'm glad you stopped me. I needed stopping." And it, it, it's called cognitive distortion, right? And they're putting it back. So you know, you just got to always be mindful that they're very, very clever at what they do. They are manipulating, and sometimes you don't open up to them because the moment you open up to them, they're into you they will then start asking you questions. And if you're not very clever, they will know everything about you and use it against you. Mm -hmm. And they, they will find your weakness and bring you to your knees because these are very, very good um, social chameleons. They, you know, they've studied it to a fine art how to, how to find someone's guilt Manipulate and use that. that guilt to manipulate mm -hmm. for themselves. Did you ever lose the head speaking to one? Um, I, I, I'm glad you said this, right? Um, I lose my head in a different way. Um, I pull it, I use my anger to, to actually, and I'm going to say this, and I don't think I've ever said this before, to destroy people. And I would. I would use it to use my intelligence and everything to take them down. That's why I enjoyed doing it with the sex offenders. I would, I would have them for, I was very clever at what I did. Very, very clever. And I would use every opportunity. Nothing was wasted with me. I would think about it constantly. I was taking paperwork home and, and I was just knowing everything about my case. So that's how I used it.